Hey everyone, Matt Saletti with DubSpot. I'm a course designer and director of our online school here, and I'm looking at some of the brand new products in Native Instruments Complete 10. Some great new synths in here. We're going to show you how they work and why you're going to want to use them. Welcome back. Let's look at the new Reactor Synth Contour. And this is brand new in Complete 10, created and designed by the founder of Native Instruments, Stefan Schmidt, which follows a long legacy of creating interesting reactor synthesizers such as Spark, such as Prism, and now Contour. And these were all influenced by a old ensemble back in like about 1999 called Weed Whacker. You can find it in the user library. And what was unique about it was it's a very simple architecture, but it employed a feedback loop, which you were able to use to shape new interesting sounds, many times organic sounds. The following synthesizers he's creative kind of followed in this lineage. So Contour is no different. What I'm going to do today is just kind of go through, show you what it is you're looking at, how to get around it, and why it's special. So let me just play a few presets so you can get an idea of the sound. Very good for these gnarly kind of sound effects as well as dissonant leads. Been listening to a lot of that Aphex Twin lately. He's obviously very good at doing those atonal kind of weird sounding leads. This is capable of doing that as well. And you'll notice that all the controls are easily mapped to these macro controls. So when I really want to kind of get in here and, and tune some knobs, you can really fine tune this instrument. Lovely sounds. Also capable of doing more organic, natural, kind of real instrument sounds. This is very tastefully employing a little bit of that feedback. Uh, and you never know when you're going to need to do like a sexy sax solo, right? You can see the keyboard also has aftertouch, which can be mapped to a whole host of things, as well as these macro controls, lots of parameters to choose from. So let me just pull up an initial patch and we'll discuss what's happening here. Boring old sine wave, you guessed it. Now, this synthesizer has basically two oscillator banks. These are both sine wave oscillators. So very simple, very pure waveform. And both of these have a sine wave shaper combined with them, which essentially is going to add to distort the original waveform. Now after that we run into a tunable comb filter, or after that we run into a state variable filter. All of these mixes are controlled here from the mix panel, so you can have a blend of these different uh, signals or run only through one, for instance. You also have a soft clipper, the very unique, very flexible feedback loop which you can run through here, and a main effect section as well. So, if I hold down a key, essentially I just have a simple sine wave. And to start shaping the sound, Contour employs phase modulation. And this is very similar to frequency modulation, which we can switch over to our friend FM8. And you can see pure sine wave, where we can actually start to modulate the carrier to actually adjust the harmonics and the waveform. So for instance I could actually go ahead and maybe turn that sine wave into a sawtooth wave by adding a complex algorithm 
right? Pretty easy to do. Now if we bounce back over to contour, this is super easy to do by way of phase modulation, which is essentially a very similar synthesis design to frequency modulation, except you're basically changing the speed, the phase of the waveform cycle. So what we can do is phase modulate it self, or phase modulate it from oscillator B or the feedback loop. So as we would start to do this, you can see, watch the oscilloscope, we'll bend it basically from a sine into a saw. I can do this from the keyboard obviously. All the controls are mapped out. Very nice. So instantly we're kind of creating new wave shapes just by turning a couple knobs. From there you can use the wave shaper. To distort it further, add more harmonics. Very simple. Now that was just oscillator wave shaper A. If I go ahead and set this to default, we're not going to hear anything. Now I can blend in B, which we haven't even touched yet. But B and A have a nice relationship where we can also use each other to phase modulate. So check this out. Get some really slick tones from that. Now, the pitch of the oscillator has a unique relationship where once it's phase modulating the other one, the tune and the pitch will actually really influence it. I could go down a perfect octave, or we could go somewhere in between and get kind of a nice, nasty, dissonant sound. So you can see right away we're getting pretty aggressive and we haven't even started distorting much after that. Now, I could set these to default and we won't hear anything, but I can run them through the comb filter. And I have an option of choosing between A and B. And then adjusting and tuning the comb filter. the tune of the all pass and instantly you can see this one is a little crazy a little bit too resonant for me but it might be nice in just a simple blend just a little bit of it combined with the other guy right and then lastly if things get too harsh too crazy you can always back it off a little bit by using the state variable filter, at which point we might run and run everything through that. We can blend between a combination of that, blend the amount of the comb filter into the filter. So on and so forth. This will do low pass, band pass, high pass, and it's pretty flexible. Now, of course, you have envelopes that you can adjust to all this kind of stuff too if you wanted to create envelope modulation. But it's pretty simple from there. And the only time you get a little more nutty is if you start to add the feedback in. So let's actually, I'm going to take the uh, comb filter off so we can get a more pure sound. Now, watch what happens if I introduce feedback into either the wave shaper or to phase modulate. It's going to get a little gnarly there, but... So we can either go from horribly distorted to very nice and subtle, like that initial uh, blown sound we had before with the, the kind of sax sound before. So, again, you don't have to get crazy with this, but just a little bit of it introduced can make a huge difference. And of course, 
you can go in and modulate these parameters in different ways with the macro controls create a lot of expressibility very easily so from there beautiful reverbs the delays and essentially you're just able to create very interesting sounds pretty quickly pretty easily next video we're going to look at what the macro controls are capable of with the help of the brand new motion recorder stay tuned